In this video, I visit three locations in the Qualicum Bay area on Vancouver Island with the recently released TT Artisan homage lens to the classic Meyer Optic Gorlitz Trioplan 100 f2.8. This is the second complete remake of this classic lens, and according to some reviewers, the best. In the first part of the video, I compare it to two contemporary lenses, both from Samyang, and later in the video I discuss some of the features of the lens that I particularly like. Join me on this adventure with the rebirth of a legendary lens. Good morning, August 23rd, 2023 received the uh, TT Artisans 100mm 2.8 lens, the uh, replica of the old Trioplan 100mm. An interesting uh, lens for them to be recreating uh, and so I've brought it out today. First day out I'm going to be setting up a composition here that includes uh, some dried leaves and a little bit of um, bokeh through some some brush in the background and I'm going to compare how this uh, lens looks to the two other lenses that I use the most for this type of thing the Samyang uh, 85 and the Samyang 135 just kind of curious to see how they handle the, the backgrounds so the first uh, the first setup here is with the the new lens I'll just give you a look on the back of the camera here uh, so you can see that um, I'm focusing in on this leaf here and this is the out of focus background that I'm interested to see how it handles that. So I'll put up on the screen now uh, the image from this camera. So I found another composition here, uh, second setup of the day. These are some leaves hanging um, down in front of, quite a, quite a ways away from um, some alder trees in the background that are uh, creating spaces where the light can come through. And um, so there were, there's potential to have uh, some nice bokeh balls there. So I'll show you on the 135 and then we'll uh, We'll switch to the other two lenses for comparison. In terms of the composition, um, primarily focusing on this lens, on this lens, on this leaf here, uh, with these other ones fading into the darker background over here, uh, and then down in the bottom here are where the the bokeh balls could, could appear. Uh, but you know, uh, it'll be interesting to see what the uh, TT Artisans. Uh, does with this. Again the light is still pretty pretty soft, pretty low, so um, this is kind of an interesting test because uh, a lot of times you see the the, the old classic uh, trioplan with very bright spectral highlights in the background creating the the bokeh bu bubbles, the uh, bubble bokeh. So um, this is a different different setup and I act, actually am kind of curious to see how this works because I often prefer the more subtle look uh, in these lower light conditions. So. Well I found a nice spot here in the forest um, it's um, a huckleberry bush with a red leaf on it and then there's a patch of sunlight hitting the uh, forest floor behind that. I'll uh, swing the camera around so you can have a look at the setting. Uh, there's the, the setup on my, on my camera and there's the scene there. Yeah, so I've set that, uh, I've kind of focused that in on the, um, yeah, the leaf. The little red leaf in the bottom is is what's in focus and so I'm going to try to get an approximation of the 
same setup with the other two lenses because they're all different focal lengths um, it's not going to be it's not going to be very close uh, and because the sunlight's changing it's not either but the red leaf will stay the same and uh, some of the light hitting the background will be the same i'll try to do this as close to the minimum focusing distance as possible because i think that's kind of where i often tend to shoot even though sometimes the bokeh is nicer a little further into the focus range but anyways you can see the line around the bokeh balls in the TTR Zen's lens, whereas with the 85mm you can see some definition but not the lines. And then with the 135 you've got a soft image. So, second day out uh, with the TTR Zen's um, 100mm 2.8 lens, the reproduction of the old Meyer Gertz. Uh, Book monster, and uh, I had a chance to test it out yesterday, comparing it with uh, some of the other lenses that I have that I like the bokeh on. And I have to say, this lens has so far not disappointed at all. Um, I'm really liking the results from it. And so today I've come out to a, this is a completely new trail to me. I've never been here before, um, but uh, already uh, I've seen some beautiful sunlight coming through and hitting the leaves. So uh, the first image I took uh, right over here produced a really nice effect in the background. It looked like on the back of the camera. So uh, today I'm just going to be uh, playing, enjoying, walking and uh, seeing what I see. And uh, then at the end I'll discuss some of the images that I was able to capture. I'm pretty confident that uh, I'm going to come away with some, some really nice images. Well, so I've walked along the, the top of the ridge here. There's two trails here, and um, the sunlight was coming through the trees and hitting huckleberry bushes, so it was really beautiful and had a chance to try out the new lens. So I think it's going to be uh, a real uh, positive addition to my kit. and. This location actually is, is also one that I'm going to return to. This is uh, Nile Creek, the lower uh, trail. And uh, so I think there's going to be lots to explore here uh, in the coming months over the winter. Um, beautiful, beautiful ferns along the, along the bank there. And um, yeah, just a, just a really nice location. I think I got some good photos. Uh, had a wonderful encounter with some chickadees and a merlin, I think, uh, trying to catch them. <laughs> Didn't get a photo because I had to switch lenses and whatnot, but uh, it was sure fun to see. So it's been a really good day for me this morning, this afternoon, I guess it is. And uh, yeah, really, really enjoying this location and this new lens. So on to the next location. So this uh, channel here is one that does not appear to be uh, in use. I guess they've diverted the uh, they've diverted the water from this particular channel. Lots of fishermen here today, and uh, here's a couple. Looks like uh, fly fishermen, and uh, uh, maybe both of them are fly fishermen. Maybe not. Um, anyways, uh, I came here today um, in part because uh, here last week with, or not last week, last yesterday with um, Wanda, and uh, we just noticed a tremendous amount of wildlife uh, here, and there always seems to be. Uh, part of what's uh, good about this habitat is right down in this big river uh, basin, there is the river, and it seems to produce a lot of uh, food for various different wildlife. <laughs> so, yesterday when we were here, uh, there was a whole troop of chickadees that came by really close, and uh, so that was one of the things that encouraged me was just. Uh, 
uh, just how much wildlife there is here and how uh, <laughs> how they I guess they're used to uh, used to people um, I'm looking in the water here and seeing a lot of small fry so that's interesting the fish are on their way up uh, when we were here yesterday we saw a bunch of salmon quite a ways up the the trail uh, that had already spawned and uh, coming in this morning I took a little video footage of the um, the ones that are waiting to come up. I think they wait at the, at the sort of the mouth of the creek uh, to acclimatize to the water and then they start their journey up. So uh, today is the third day of my experimenting with the new TT Artisan uh, 100 millimeter f2.8. Um, I'm heading across this little bridge right now. There's some fireweed on the other side uh, catching the sun really nicely. So I'm going to experiment with it there. And uh, yeah, I'm just spending the, the day enjoying uh, this place and taking my time with this new lens to really see what its, uh, what its abilities really are. Um, so far, I have to say, I've been very impressed with the lens. It's, uh, it's performing very well, exactly what I was hoping for. In fact, I think maybe even better than I was hoping the uh, chromatic aberrations and that sort of thing. The ones that we want are there and the, the ones that we don't want are not there. So it looks like uh, TTR Designs has done a really good job with that lens, but today is going to be a much more in-depth use of the lens. I'm hoping to figure out the optimal focal lengths for the type of bokeh that I like and that sort of thing. So I will be reporting on that uh, as we go along. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really pleased to be here. Uh, it's a truly beautiful place. So this is the uh, the bank of these fireweed right here. Uh, of course I had some fun in there the bokeh does produce a very nice uh, background when you focus on the individual blossoms. Um, of course it is midday, sun's right overhead, so sort of in some ways the worst possible lighting. But nevertheless, uh, it'll be interesting to see what we get on that. Uh, one thing that I was noticing was that um, I like that. I like the focal length, the uh, 100 millimeter focal length, and uh, I guess I'm getting comfortable with that length now. Um, these are, I think, these would be really, really beautiful uh, with some morning uh, or you know golden hour light on them. Um, as it is, the uh, yeah, the colors are really washed out. So we'll see what we can do with it in uh, in post, but. Uh, interesting anyways just to see the uh, the effect I have to say I really like the effect of all the individual uh, flower uh, whatever they're called the things that hold the flowers out from the rest of the stem uh, in the in the blur in the black background uh, those do look really nice and it was fun sort of just to playing with some of the compositions but unfortunately in this kind of light I think I need to move into the forest uh, deeper and uh, try to find some some more mottled uh, lighting uh, to get some really pleasing colors but it was fun for an experiment and uh, I'm going to keep keep going now this um, I've come across that dry channel and on the other side here we have uh, the the channel I guess where the the mage the main water is flowing um, so I'm going to carry on up and we'll see what we find it's a, a fun experience to just this time of year is not always the best for for uh, subjects, but uh, it's not it's not the the summer uh, the summer peak is just past. We're not into the fall colors yet, really. There's a little bit of of color in in some of these uh, salmon berries and that sort of thing, but uh, not significant color yet from the fall colors. So yeah, we're kind of in a shoulder period for photography, but you never know what you're going to find. So we'll we'll have fun seeing seeing what we can find in the in the day ahead. So I've stopped at one of my favorite uh, pieces of forest here on the uh, Qualicum River Trail. It's um, 
just a small stand of trees really. Um, they seem to be older than uh, some of the other ones or maybe it's just the fact there's this little creek here flowing by. Uh, this is a very wet part of the kind of where the the creek is the main creek has done a curve and so this is probably a low-lying wet spot. At any rate it's produced some beautiful trees. I'll just uh, turn the camera around here so you can see. Uh, you can see these tall uh, trunks here and that's part of what I'm hoping to do is uh, get some compositions. You can see deer fern here uh, below and then this little creek down here at the bottom. So opportunities for reflections and uh, some uh, light spots off the creek there. Um, and there's also um, some devil's club in here some big big leaves so um, i think i'm going to have fun uh, finding some compositions and uh, just trying out the the different backgrounds to see which which bokehs give me the best results i'm just panning over here so you can see this big <laughs> that is a very large uh, devil's club those leaves are massive so cool stuff uh, i love this little piece of, of forest here so i think we're gonna have a lot of fun so after wandering around in this forest for uh, quite a while um, taking some photos um, it's really lovely here i i just there's something about this particular type of forest that appeals to me greatly i don't know if you can see behind me there there's a uh, these are all uh, young hemlocks I think growing up here in the understory and uh, so they're yeah they, they just form these really beautiful um, kind of see it there these really beautiful young sprays of foliage in the forest and then of course when they catch the light like that one is uh, it's yeah it's just incredibly lovely uh, everywhere you look. Um, the actual composition that has caught my mind, my mind, my eye today, uh, maybe my mind too, is um, just down here. I'll turn the uh, camera around so you can see it. Now there's my camera on the forest floor there and you can see it's pointing over at this little hemlock here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see it right there. And so, of course, it doesn't look like much, but when you get down onto the camera, just turn it back on here. Let's see if we can get it lined up without too much of a reflection. Um, it's gotten darker. But you can see that uh, there's this lovely separation with the moss in front on the little log and then the trees in the background there um, blurred out. So I think this is going to make a really nice, really nice image. And uh, I think it's the best one that I found today. So I'm going to give that a try. If it turns out, I will put it up now. Well, I have a few observations after using this lens for several hours now, I guess going on five or six hours, um, pretty much constant shooting between today and, and previous days. Um, there's a couple of things that I would comment about it. Uh, first is that it, there's some really nice features that you would never think of unless you were ha holding it in your hands. The first is that when you put it onto the camera, you can grab this piece up here and put it on without changing your focus or your aperture. So that is a nice feature that a lot 
like for instance my Laowa lens it's I constant I constantly have to adjust the focus afterwards because it goes all the way whichever way you're taking it off or putting it on it it turns you know you've tended to grab the focus ring um, the focus ring just feels in the right place here just when you're shooting it just feels right and not having a confusion with the aperture ring is a really nice feature the you, you just know that if I ever want to increase the depth of field I just reach forward to that aperture ring and you can just manually move it up like that and it just feels great so that's interesting uh, interesting that I've really enjoyed uh, using the lens just functionality I don't know I doubt if any of that was deliberately designed that way uh, maybe um, you know that it's a it's an old lens that was uh, designed with a lot of thought I would think in the originally the original Meyer Gertz lens which this is a copy of um, there's a it, the focus is really nice on this it's just the right amount of of resistance and it does have the scale on it so um, it's been interesting as I've been watching myself taking these pictures to notice easily that the uh, best range for my taste in terms of the bokeh is between 1 and about 1.2 uh, meters and so you can see that really easily on the front you know I uh, I sometimes will set up my shots uh, with that in mind um, that works really well with uh, larger subjects with smaller subjects uh, I tend to go uh, as you know because the because the focus distance is 0.9 so basically uh, close to a meter I guess not really but yeah pretty pretty close to a meter getting close to things like the the deer fern and some of the little trees that I've been trying to take photos of uh, does mean that you're trying to get as close as you can so you go to that minimum focus distance at that point the bokeh is not as distinct or not as obvious and sometimes that's what you're looking for too so it's been interesting pl playing around with that the other the other thing that certainly came to mind as I was using this is the old you know the old uh, chestnut about you know gear uh, and how important is gear um, certainly for the experience I was just here by the creek sort of standing above the flowing water with the, for some ferns in front of me taking pictures of those ferns and really enjoying watching the the just the very gentle current uh, behind the ferns the way it was sh making shapes out of the bokeh um, haven't experienced that as much with other lenses um, I think because this has such a pronounced bubble bokeh you tend to play around with the bokeh more and you tend to notice it more maybe a good thing or a bad thing but for the experience it, it, it's a really good feature I really enjoyed that and able to get images over the water there um, that you just would not get with with most other lenses um, that bubble bokeh um, when it's in a darker setting or when the uh, bright spots in the background are just aren't as distinct means that you you have more to play with um, and yeah so <laughs> for me and I've said this before uh, gear makes a huge difference uh, you know I never I never purchased ordered one of the original um, Meyer Gertz lenses the the uh, tri -plan, um because it just seemed too expensive for what you got and having looked at some videos already uh, where people have reviewed the two lenses uh, in comparison it's clear that those old lenses have a lot of dust in them and having a, a brand new lens with that with that quality that bubble bokeh quality it's pretty 
it's pretty nice it's very enjoyable so i you know if you're if you're at all interested in this kind of photography if you're looking for something uh that allows you to even in the <laughs> even in the the midsummer when there's not a lot to take photos of um, it allows you to have some fun and to be creative and to see things in a different way um, a lot of times with these um, you know with the creek and the ferns and when I was overtaking the pictures of the little um, the little fir uh, not fir hemlock trees you know just the seedlings just that big playing around with the shallow depth of field, the color of the logs, the red of the log in the background with the verticals of the light streaming through the tall trees. Um, it, it's a bit like a, you know, it's a bit like a treasure hunt to find the composition that really takes advantage of all of that. And you know, I think it's something you can work on for a long time. I've been doing this for a couple of years now and still I'm not tired of it you know trying to find those unique images um, and you know playing around with the composition is fun challenging and rewarding too when you when you actually find one that works so anyways I'm gonna keep going here uh, I'm gonna go up the road a little ways further and uh, look for some uh, some more open water with a little bit more movement in it play around there and then I'll be heading back I'm not sure if I'll take any more uh, video but I uh, just wanted to stop here and, and make those comments while they were fresh in my mind. I did find a place further up the trail by the water and was able to get one particularly pleasing shot. But to be honest the time I spent in the forest is where I got most of my favorite shots. For instance this is an image of hemlock needles caught in a spider's web and the way this lens treats this collection of needles is really interesting. I found this to be surprisingly beautiful. This image is of a conch or polypore mushroom, likely Fomatopsis pinacola. It's a favorite because of the composition of light with a more subtle bokeh. In fact, this image could have been captured with a few different lenses. Uh, many of the ones that I have would produce similar results, but the bokeh balls that are produced by this lens are particularly uniform and pleasing. The last image, as noted earlier, was my favorite from all three days because it uses the complexity of the bokeh in a very pleasing way, at least to my taste. So that wraps up this video. As will be obvious if you watched all the way through, I have very little negative to say about this lens and much to be enthusiastic about. If you're not put off by the limitations of sharpness and minimum focusing distance, I think you'll be very pleased with what this lens can offer you.